All right, so let's take a minute and try this next question where we are going to be discussing finding the centroid of a triangle. So we're given triangle ABC with our vertices A, negative 2, 8, B, negative 6, negative 2, and C, 12, 6. Like I said, I would highly suggest um, drawing this on, even if you don't have a piece of graph paper, just go ahead and draw your X, Y axis and just kind of roughly estimate where A, um, B and C are going to be just so you have an idea of what you're doing as you're answering this question. Okay. All right. So the question is asking us to find the coordinates of the centroid of the triangle. Now it's going to be important for you to understand what the centroid is. Remember the centroid is the intersection of the three medians of the triangle. So let's just remember what the three medians do. The medians come from the vertex, they hit the opposite side, and they cut it in half, okay? So this is one um, median, all right? So let's take a look at what our second median would look like. So our second median would come from the vertex B, go to the opposite side, and cut it in half, okay? It does not necessarily mean that it hits it at a 90 degree angle, it just cuts it in half. And then what would our third one look like? Our third one would come from C, go to the opposite side, and it would cut it in half. Now, based on what we did in the previous question, it says find the coordinates of the centroid of the triangle. So the centroid is right here. That is where the three medians intersect. Okay, so if you uh, <laughs> remember what we did in the last one, what they're basically going to do is the same thing. The only difference here is we're going to find the intersection of the medians. And you don't have to find the intersection of all three. As long as you find the intersection of two of them, then you're going to find the intersection of where the third one would go because they all go through that same point. So that means the key here is that we're gonna find the equation of two of the lines and see where they intersect. So in this case, we're actually gonna find the equation of the median that hits AB. Okay, so that's actually starting from C and the median that hits BC, that's starting from A. So you're like, well, how do I write the equation if I don't know the slope? So this is gonna be a little bit different. Think about this. Let's take a look at our red median. You're actually going to have two points there. The first point is vertex A. The second point is going to be the midpoint of BC. So you're actually going to have two points when you write the equation of your line. All right, so for your second one, we are going to be finding the midpoint of AB. Okay, so the midpoint of AB, so that's going to have the point on C and the midpoint of AB. So you're, the important thing to recognize is to say, okay, I'm going to write the equation of two lines, maybe kind of highlight them or do something like that. Drop, find your vertex, drop to the opposite side, draw a picture, find these two ordered pairs, and from these two ordered pairs, you're going to write the equation of the line. Okay, then here, okay, draw your picture, write what C is write what the midpoint is, and now you have two ordered pairs and you're gonna write the equation of that line. All right, so let's see kind of like what that looks like as we go through this. All right, so please make sure that when you do this, you are going to have to show your work. Um, and we already kind of discussed what we're gonna do. You Here's just a table for you. You can use this if you want to. Um, you do not have to use this table, and you can actually pick any midpoint and vertex to start from. It doesn't matter as long as you pick two of them. All right, so let's just take a look at our example here. And we said we are going to find the midpoint of two sides, okay? And in my example, I said that I'm gonna use a to BC, so I need to find the midpoint of BC, and then I also said I'm going to go from C to AB, so I need to find the midpoint of AB. All right, so and it might be helpful for you to, you know, write your ordered pairs on here so it's easy to see. So first, let's find the midpoint of AB. So you have your two ordered pairs right here, okay? If you need to highlight them or whatever, go for it, okay? Um, 
Okay, find the midpoint of AB, and that's just adding your X's and dividing by 2 and adding your Y's dividing by 2. Okay, so your midpoint is adding negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8, divided by 4 is negative 2. And then um, positive 8 plus negative 2 is 6, divided by 2 is your 3. Okay, so I'm actually going to write the other point that you're going to use right next to it. This is the midpoint of AB. This was negative 4 comma 3. And then you're going to use this point right here with C, which is 12 comma 6, to write the equation of your line. So I just want you to kind of have that together so it's easier to see. All right, now let's take a look at the next one. We need to find the midpoint of BC. So the midpoint of BC, add your x's, negative 6 plus 12 is um, 6, divided by 2 is 3, negative 2 plus 6 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so that is the midpoint of BC. See how C, BC, see how e much easier it is if you have a diagram here? So I'm going to label this midpoint right here as 3 comma 2, and I'm going to label this, I know that it came from vertex A, so I need negative 2 comma 8. So basically, now you know, and I'm going to put this right here, now all you know is you're going to write the equation of two lines. The first one is going to go through this point. The first one, the second one is going to go through these two points. And then you are going to find the intersection um, of those two lines. So um, I'm not going to show the work for this on here, so I want you to try it and kind of check your answer. But just remember the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to find the slope, okay, of the two points. And then you're going to do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And you're going to fill in the slope that you found, your y1 and your x1. And it doesn't matter which ordered pair you use. Just pick one. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, just make sure your x and y are from the same ordered pairs. And then just like in the previous one, um, step number three, so step two is plugging it in here. Step three is you're going to solve for y. Okay, and you might get some wonky fractions. That's okay. Um, totally fine. You're going to solve for y. Okay, so in the end, you're going to have a y equals for your first one, a y equals for your second one, and you're going to set what is after the y equals equal to each other. All right, now here's what your equations should be. Here were the two equations. The first one that is in red, this is this equation right here, and that's after you did all this work. The second one that you did, um, the, the one in purple that I have over here, is this right here. Like I said, try this, see if you get this equation. If you wanna use decimals, that's totally fine. I don't care, this is just what we have here. But if you can't get that and you need help, just let me know, okay? All right, so then the next thing that we want to do is actually solve the system. All right, so to solve the system, we're going, since this is y equals and this is y equals, we are going to set each of these two equal to each other. Okay, now I know that's ugly, <laughs> but you have a couple of choices. Like you can multiply to get rid of your fractions, um, and that might actually be helpful, but it's totally up to you. Once you solve it, you should get 1.33 or 4 thirds. Or you could leave it as fractions and subtract it using fractions. It is totally and completely up to you. If you leave it as fractions, um, you just have to get like a common denominator and then, um, you know, divide by a fraction and then you have to multiply by the reciprocal. But if you have questions on that, let me know. Just try that and see if you can get the 1.33 or the 4 thirds. But then remember, you have to solve for y because the intersection right here is an x comma y ordered pair. So how did we get y equals 4? So I just picked one of these two equations. It doesn't matter which one it is. And we're going to plug in 4 thirds for x. Now look at how, look how nice this looks, right? Okay, notice the 3 times 4 thirds, that cancels out. And you are left with 4 over 16, okay, plus 15 over 4. Sorry, that's kind of messy. And 4 over 16 is the same thing as 1 fourth plus 15 fourths. So that's 16 fourths which is y equals four. So just make sure you write your final answer. 
Okay, make sure that you're going to write your final answer as an ordered pair, and that final answer ordered pair should be four thirds comma four. Okay, so where those two lines intersect was four thirds comma four. All right, so um, I am going to show you next the easy way to do this. So we showed you the hard way first. Um, I'm going to show you the easy way next. Now, this only works for centroids. It does not work for anything else. Okay, but I would highly suggest doing it this way if you can, because it does just make your life a little bit easier. So um, your centroid, remember, is the intersection of the medians. Medians come from the vertex, go to the opposite side, cut the opposite side in half. So since we're kind of cutting everything in half, think of finding the averages. So this only works for the centroid. So you can find the average of the three vertices. So what does that mean? So you have your vertice A, you have your vertice B, and you have your vertice C. So you have X for A, you have X for B, and you have X for C. So if you add X1 plus X2 plus X3 and divide it by three, notice we're dividing by three, the reason we're dividing by three is because, um, Sorry, dividing by three because there's actually three of them. All right, so then this should turn out to be four on the top, okay? And then the three is just chilling there. And then here, our, we're gonna average all the Y's. We have three of them. So we're gonna add eight plus negative two, six. So six plus six is 12 divided by three, and you get your final answer, the same thing as we did before, four thirds comma four. Okay, um, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. I'm happy to help.